العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين مولانا وسيدنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض أرواحنا له الفداء وعجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد Respected elders, brothers, sisters We have been discussing so far Some of the realities of death and of barzakh Now one of the questions which I've been getting Is regarding um, the access That the marhumin who are currently in barzakh Have towards this world do they have access? Is there any access possible? Do they, for example, we hear that on Jumerats they come and visit their families? Is it true? Is it not true? What does all that mean? So, we have again, we have to analyze it in terms of the three groups. For the top group, who are the pure souls, who, have, who don't have corruption, they will be given a lot of access to this world. For them, there's a lot of freedom. They will have a lot of freedom in Barzakh. And for them, it's like a veil that, per, that separates them from this world. This veil is there. They can choose to move it and see what's going on and access this world, or they can choose to close and not see. So for them, it's very easy. They have a freedom of movement, if you like. For ordinary souls, let's say those souls who are not in that top group, but they are somewhat in the middle group and they have a degree of goodness. Well, for them, they will be given brief glimpses. For them, it's not so free. For them, it's not so free just to access this world. They will be given brief glimpses, mainly to do with their own lives that they left behind and their families which are continuing after them. Someone came to Imam Musa Qazim alayhi salam, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And he says, Mawla, does the dead mayat, the dead person, visit his relatives? Mawla replied, yes. Then he asked, how often? And Mola replied, Fil Jum'a, wa fi shahr, wa fi sana, ala qadri manzilatihi. He said, Some will come every week on a Jum'a, like Thursday night and Friday day. Some will come once a month. Some will access once a year, all depending on their level in the hereafter. So the freer and the more purer soul is, they will be given more access, they will have more freedom. Those who don't will be given less. What do they do when they come to visit us? Let me just reassure you, in Islam we don't have anything like haunting or spirits that haunt or ghosts. We don't have that in Islam, yeah? Jinnat is a different thing. I'm talking about arwah of mu'minin, yeah? We don't have this thing like haunting. So what do they do when they visit us? Well, they basically observe. And when they see us in our families and their families that they have left behind doing good deeds, they feel very happy because they have now seen the fruits of those good deeds in the hereafter. They have seen the recompense which Allah gives. And when they see us doing anything bad, God forbid, they feel very sad because they can see or they're aware of the consequences of those evil deeds in the hereafter. If the connection between the living one and the one in Barzakh is very strong, then, yes, very possibly they will come in the dreams. It's very, very possible that they will come in the dreams. And Azizan, those who have that connection with the souls of the Masumin, those Masumin can come in the dreams as well. Don't be surprised, inshallah, if ever you see one of the Imams in your dreams this is a very special thing. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this kind of dream that we see the imams in our dreams. But don't be surprised if you have a good connection with Amir al muminin with Imam Hussain alayhi salam, that they will come in your dreams. Why not? This is also possible. So another question which has come up over the next few days is that, look, on one hand we're saying that the body is left behind, right? The body is left behind, it's buried. It's now lifeless. The soul has gone, so the body is lifeless then why do we always concentrate our efforts on the grave? Because by this theory, the soul is not at the grave anymore, it's moved on. 
the grave is basically our best connection with that soul. It represents the soul. It represents, because we can't see the soul. The soul is immaterial and non-physical. It's moved on from this world. We don't have access to the soul directly. So what do we have access to? We have access to the nearest thing, which is the grave. And that grave is the thing that we concentrate upon in order to access that soul. Hence, we go to the grave. We pray there. We pray Yasin. We pray Surah Mulk. We pray Inna Anzalna. We do all of these things. We water the grave. Watering the grave is also one of the ways that Allah reaches the mercy onto that person. Okay? Through watering the grave. All of these things are done because that grave basically represents that soul. Okay? So even we have hadith that, for example, when you have hajat, certain hajat, and you want them to be accepted, go to the graves, yes, Aima alayhi salam, absolutely, but also the graves of your parents as well, if they've left this world, may Allah have mercy upon them. Go to the graves of your parents and do your duas there. Someone says to the imam, but I can't, I can't get to the grave of my parents, now what do I do? Imam says something phenomenal. Imams show us every solution and every way. He says, if you cannot reach, for whatever reason, it's far away or it's lost or you don't even know, for example. If you can't reach the grave of your parents, just do a niyat. Take your finger and like draw two lines in the sand and say, I wish I could be at the grave of my parents, but I can't. I will assume this is the grave and do your hajat there. So these things are because it's the best effort. We can't access the soul directly, so the grave is like the representation of that soul. Amirul Mu'minin says, visit your deceased. Visit your deceased, for they are pleased with your visits. Because there's that connection still. Allah allows that connection to continue via the grave site. Similarly, when you pray for them, when we do these Surah Fatihas, when we do these A'mal and we say, you know what, Allah, I've done this, gift it to my marhumin, gift it to my parents, gift it to whoever it may be, gift it to Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt don't need our gifts at all. We are benefiting, of course, first and foremost. They don't need our gifts. However, it's a gesture. It's a very, very good gesture. Anytime you recite Quran, gift it to Imam Zaman. You, re- you keep a mustahab fast, gift it to Imam Zaman. You do something good, you give charity, gift it to Imam Zaman. This, what does it do? It strengthens your connection with the Imam. You feel and you, you have really done something for your Imam. And he will appreciate that. Do a good deed in their memory. Now, I think we've discussed Barzakh. Now we'll move on to the next and final stage, which is the day of judgment. With a salawat, please. Allah, Allah on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Once the period of barzakh comes to an end, then Allah instructs the angel Israfil to do what? What is the job of Israfil? Do you remember your madrasa days? Israfil does the trumpet blowing. Allah instructs Israfil to blow the trumpet. There are two blows of the trumpet. The first one is the one which causes annihilation. Everything dies again. Everything dies and goes into a kind of deep sleep or slumber. There's no consciousness at that time. This will be very sudden and maybe even very violent, this kind of blowing of the trumpet. Imagine everything dropping dead. يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي السُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ This is 2787. The day when the trumpet will be blown Whoever is in the heavens will be terrified and whoever is on the earth, except whom Allah may wish. And all will come to him in utter humility. So what will happen when this happens? What is this trumpet blowing? Why does Allah have this way of doing it? The first thing will be that the earth will begin to shake. There will be earthquakes. The sun will be extinguished. What is that verse? Where is the shamsu? Kuwirat. نُجُومٌ كَدَرَتْ Right? When the, sun is inst- when, when the sun is extinguished or goes dark and when the ska- uh, stars scatter, the, su- the stars will fade, the sun will get ex- extinguished, the seas will burst into flame, the sky will be rent asunder, 
the ground will be pounded and it will become featureless. At the moment when you look at the world, when you look at the earth, you'll see there are lowlands, there are highlands, there are mountains, there are valleys, there is, you know, different shapes and sizes of the earth. It goes up and down. For the preparation of Qiyamah, this earth, this earth will now become featureless. It'll become plain. It'll become pounded. The mountains will be no more. This is when the trumpet is blown. Israfil will also die. Only a handful will remain alive, as per 3968, uh, where we said, except whomever Allah wishes. So what will happen is you will have a situation where there will be total stillness and darkness. It is as if, if someone looked at the earth at that time, they'll think nothing existed here at all. All trace and all manner of features and life will be gone. Why? Why go through all this? What is it that Allah is trying to do here in this blowing of the trumpet and making everything die and making everything featureless? This is so the universe can evolve. Very important. When we are raised on the Day of Judgment, which we are coming to in a minute, when we are raised on the Day of Judgment, we will see a different type of world and earth. It won't be the earth that we are used to. So the evolution of the universe needs to happen, things need to happen, changes need to happen in the whole universe. All these different dimensions have to be changed. Earth will change, Barzakh will change, the world of angels will change, everything will be changed by Allah in order to prepare for this new phase of life, which is going to be even more rich and more expansive than anything we have ever known. The world... You think this is expansive? When you go to Barzakh, you'll say the world was nothing. Like the baby coming out of the womb. It thought it, its whole world was the womb. He didn't know anything else. It comes out of the womb and it sees, wow, this is another amazing world. From this world, when we go into Barzakh, we'll say, wow, that world was nothing. This is the most expansive world. Barzakh will finish, we'll go into Qiyamah, we'll think, wow, Barzakh was nothing. In each stage, the power of Allah will be manifested in a different way. It will become more and more expansive. <coughs> How long will this last? How long will there be of this featureless and lifeless universe? No one knows. Because there will be no one to count. The sun is not there anymore for us to count hours and days and weeks and months. The earth is not going around the sun anymore for us to count days and weeks and months. We don't know. It could be billions of years. Billions of years could have passed in this deep slumber. This is actually one of the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us in this slumber while all these tumultuous changes are taking place to save us from these, from these you know, chaotic and scary changes. So whilst we are in slumber, all of this will evolve and all of this, all of this will take place. Then he will bring back Israfil to life and he will tell him once again, you must blow the trumpet. This trumpet will be the opposite effect. That one was to put everything in slumber. This new one is to bring everything out of slumber and raise everyone. So what will be the changes in the solar system, in the earth and everything? Now we can try our best to give some sort of scientific explanation, but I think usually... I think generally this is futile, but okay, some people may be thinking, you know, how does this all happen? Maybe you can say, you know, because the sun is not there, the gravitational pull is not there, so the earth changes. You can pontificate on this as much as you want, but at the end of the day, it's futile. What we can say is this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth will be stretched. Does that mean it stops being in a sphere? Does it become like a flat, open earth? Allahu A'lam, we don't know. But it somehow will be stretched, it will be expanded. Mountains and valleys will go, even the sky will look different. Because there's no sun now. So there has to be another kind of way of the sky appearing. So this is in Surah Rahman. Many of these verses, by, by the way, I'm going to bring today, you'll be surprised. We read them all the time, but we haven't made these connections yet. Surah Rahman, Allah says, 5537, When 
when the sky is split open and turns crimson like tanned leather. So it will be a different hue of the sky. It will have a different color. Secondly, what will happen? This is fascinating. Every atom, every electron, neutron, atom, whatever you can think of, particle, will be given the power to speak and communicate. So right now, these things actually right now, they do have a perception. They are sort of recording things. Amir al muminin used to tell his companions, pray your namazes in different parts of the mosque. Why? Because on the Day of Judgment, each part of the mosque will then give witness that this man prayed upon me. Everything you do, everything you walk on, everything you touch, everything you eat, everything you use, all of this has a memory. And on the Day of Judgment, it will be brought forth. So these atoms will have the ability to communicate. Earth, the earth will start to recount all the events in the long history of humankind. It will start telling its story that this happened and this happened and this happened and he did this and she did that and whatever. The idols, because they are made of atoms obviously, although they're not living beings, they're made of atoms. Even those idols will speak by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In tad'uhum la yasma'u, this is 3514. Allah says, if you, invoke th- if you invoke them, they will not hear your invocation. They're lifeless, they're dead, they're not gods. And even if they heard, they cannot respond to you. But on the day of, of resurrection, they will forswear your polytheism. They will now speak against you. And none can inform you like the one who is all aware, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the idols will say, you were stupid to worship me. Why did you worship me? I was lifeless. Our limbs will testify against us. Our arms, our legs, this will be very painful for many people. They will say, but you are mine. Why do you testify against me? You are mine. And it will say, no, I'm not yours. And I was never yours. This was your foolish thought about me. I was always Allah's. You were meant to use me in the right way. You didn't use me. Our limbs will testify. Our hands, our legs, everything will testify. Now there are three places on the Day of Judgment, and there are three phases, okay? Let me explain the places and the phases with one, Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The three places and the three phases. The first place will be the graveside. The second place and the second phase will be what we call mahshar, mahshar, okay? Mahshar is what? The place of assembly where everyone will be gathered. And the third phase or the third place is your final abode, heaven or hell. Three phases, three places, okay? The first thing that will happen on the Day of Judgment, when it's all ready, there will be an intense awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is already here. But we, don't, we are not aware of Him. We don't perceive Him properly. Maybe He's like a thought in the back of our mind. Maybe when we come to mosque, we, we think about Him. Maybe when we pray, we think about Him. Maybe in majalis, we think about Him. Generally in the day, do we really think about Him much? Are we perceptive of Him? Do we perceive Him? Maybe not that much. On the Day of Judgment, there is no option. You, everyone will become intensely aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we say, Maliki Yawmid Deen. The master of the Day of Judgment. He's the master of this world as well. He's the master of this day as well. Today he's the master. However, we don't recognize it. On the Day of Judgment, we will intensely recognize that he is the Lord, and he is presiding over all of this. So the next blowing of the trumpet by Israfil will blow and the breeze of this life will enter every single thing and everything will again come to life out of slumber 
and it will be raised. Hence, one of the days of Qiyamat is day of resurrection. That raising, that resurrecting will happen with the blowing of the trumpet. And then we have the journey of the human on that day. The return of man. Okay? The return of man. Where will we find ourselves? We will find ourselves basically at our graveside. We will come out of our graves. We had been buried. We had decomposed maybe. But the body now is reformed. And the body is not the, the, the worldly body, it's not the barzakhi body, it is a combination of all three. You have a physical element, you have a barzakhi element, you have an akhirat element. How this will work, we don't know exactly. Like, if you, if you were to ask me exactly how the workings of this are, we don't know the details. But somehow you will have an element of all of these three. Because it's a very advanced day that day. We will find ourselves being raised in the same place that we had been buried, we may have decomposed, but that will all be put together and we will be raised. Now, for some time, when we are raised, we will be wonderstruck. We won't know what's going on. Again, confusion. Are we really recreated and reformed? All that time ago I had died, the world has changed, everything looks different. But I have just emerged from my grave in that form that I am in. We were dust and bones, and now we are again clothed in flesh. How does this happen? Again, subhanAllah, Allah's system. There is something on the Day of Judgment called the reign of Qiyamat. The reign of Qiyamat. Imam Jafar Sadiq salam says, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa When Allah will bring creation back to life, he makes a rainfall for 40 days that causes bones to knit together and become clothed in flesh. There will be a sort of rain on the Day of Judgment. Where are the clouds? Where is the water? That is all details. We, I don't know how to make sense of that in a scientific way, but there will be some form of rain on the Day of Judgment. And that will form the bodies and we will be raised once again. This again is in the Holy Quran. I'm telling you, I've probably read this verse again and again and again. I never picked up on this. It's only when we make these connections do we understand these things. 50.11 Rizqan lil ibad. Allah is saying about the rain. The rain. The normal rain. The rain of this world. Rizqan lil ibad. It is a provision for the servants. Wa ahyayna bihi baldatan mayta. With it we revive a dead country. The ground is dead. Nothing is growing. Allah sends rain, things start to grow. Winter comes, things go dead. Spring comes, everything comes back to life. وَكَذَلِكَ كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوجِ And likewise will be the rising from the dead. In the same way, the same principle applies. So that's why the Quran says again and again, do you not see how everything is dead and then the rain falls and everything come back, comes back to life? If the one who can bring forth life in the form of plants and trees and crops from the dead earth, and it's showing you in front of you every year you see this phenomenon, can he not bring the bodies which are buried in the ground back to life? Think, think, the Quran is trying to tell us, think of the signs around you. We are putting it in front of you. It's in your face. But you have to pay attention. Now, again, someone will ask, the scientific minded will ask, how, when the body is decomposed, so my body is in the ground, and it's being eaten, for example, by insects, these pieces of me have now entered into the bodies and stomachs of insects. Those insects have now died and decomposed, and new insects come, and they maybe eat a bit more, and over time it withers away and withers away and decomposes and rots and this and that, those insects, God knows where they are, and this and that. How? How is it possible that this happens? Here, Rasulullah has a hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The earth consumes every part of the human body 
except the deepest part of the spinal column, which is a grain smaller than a mustard seed, and from this the person will be revived. Allah system, Allah system. We, you know, apro magajaj kam ne kare. We won't even understand how, how. We can ask how as much as we want. There has to be a time when we just say, you know what, Allah, you are too good. You are too amazing. You are too powerful. We don't understand how you do these things, but it will be done. And then what will happen is the bodies will form over time and then the trumpet is blown and that breeze of life from the trumpet will enter into the bodies and we will have this new qayamati life. Inshallah, we'll discuss more. Tomorrow we will then start with the day of judgment itself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins, bless our marhumeen, accept our a'mal and deeds, hasten the repentance of our 12th Imam, allow us tawfiq to be in his group when he comes, relieve the suffering of all the mu'minin and mu'minat. Rabbana taqabal minna innaka anta samiul alim. For the quick zuhur of Imam Zaman, let's have three loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.